I was going to say a word. because everyone ha is having way too much fun uh, for Monday night. And I'm so happy we're all here. I'm so happy we get to visit with each other. Uh, what a treat. I mean, first of all, hey, hi, Sue. <laughs> um, I do know a lot of people here, and I'm sure you also know a lot of people here. How many people have seen people here they haven't seen in a few years? <laughs> um, well, that's... that's <laughs> Oh, somebody. Oh, you have what? Oh, no. Good neighbor Oh, jump start. She's the one with the car lights on the truck. I made a boo boo. I left the headlights on. Well, I mean, I'm sure we could solve that by the time that the show's over. Okay, well. Um, so just a couple of questions before we get going. I know there's some people who've never been here before, so I always like to check in with you all. How many people have never been here before? And yay! Woo! Um, well, yay. Um, thanks for uh, Thank coming out to some uh, stranger's house you've never met before and hanging out with a bunch of other strangers. Um, uh, so that's kind of um, lots of fun. How would, um, and I see a lot of people who've been here before, and I, a lot of people I haven't seen in some time. So. That's a real treat for me. Um, I'm also live streaming the show, so if you're uh, feeling like you just want to hibernate and not go out, which, I don't know, does that happen? Yes. Um, <laughs> you can also tune in and watch any of our shows live online um, for all or part of it, even afterwards. So do check that out. I'm going to welcome the live stream folks. Thank you for tuning in online from wherever you are. I know my parents are. Hi, Mom and Dad! <laughs> um, often this year in Nevada, uh, it's, uh, they are getting live music too, so tell your friends. Um, well, this uh, fabulous band, I think, has gained a name since last time. Wow, I think true. Were oh known as, we weren't a, oh you weren't God. Kalos, and so that's kind of promoting it. I had to kind of remind people who is Kalos? Who oh, that's people? right. Yeah. Um, so, Kalos played here back in 2019. Uh, how many people came to that show? Who remembers that? Yeah. Oh, very memorable. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I've had the pleasure of presenting these artists uh, sometimes several times before with different projects, but um, <coughs> it's the second time of this particular band. So I am really thrilled to welcome back Kalos. So let's give him a warm round of applause. <laughs>
years since we've been here at all so uh, it's great to see you all again this is such a wonderful place to play it feels so so like home every time we come and so thank you guys for having us thank you all for coming out on a Monday night we really appreciate it uh, I think it's Earth Day today Yay. Yeah. and it's Passover I believe as well uh, I'm sure that anybody who's celebrating Passover might not be here but, <laughs> but anyway so we are at Kalos it's We've been Carlos for some time. It, it feels like an old thing, but I guess it's new to, to us all. So. Well, we named ourselves Carlos, and then the world shut down. Mm -hmm. So it has been a little bit of a gap. So it's your fault. It is our fault. <laughs> 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 yeah. It turned out to be not such a good name, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, we, uh, we, we are Carlos, and, and what we like to do is uh, is something that we, we've sort of coined this term for ourselves a little bit that we call Celtic Roots, which is sort of a, a blend of traditional music and the music that inspires us and whatever comes out. So uh, we've all studied a lot of different styles of traditional music and we're bringing a lot of all these different things together. Some of it's Irish, Scottish, Quebecois, all kinds of different, different traditions, Scandinavian traditions, and we're just kind of letting that all seep in and we're doing a lot of our own writing and stuff like that. And songs, uh, songs from peers and people we admire so if you wrap that all up into a ball, we call that Celtic Roots. 
so that first set of tunes that we played was a great example of that. It was three tunes from three parts of the world. First came from Quebec, which is my adopted homeland. I live there now. I got my permanent residency two weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm here. <laughs> um, but uh, that was a tune written by Pascal Jem, who's a wonderful Quebec fiddler who I know has been on this very stage a number of times. So. It's nice to say that in front of an audience that would know who that is, because oftentimes we're not in front of an audience that knows who that is, and it just is dead silent. <laughs> <laughs> <We're> like, <"Ugh." laughs> you guys need to be educated. <laughs> Uh, the second tune was an Irish tune. It's a session tune that, that's, uh, that's always fun to play, and it's called Joe Durain's. And we ended with uh, a contemporary tune by a Norwegian fiddler about a bar in Shetland, and that's called The Lounge Bar, which is the place in Shetland. Uh, and then the song we sang after that uh, comes from the great David Francie. Yes. Yeah, everyone, I hope yes. many people here would know David Francie, yeah, I'm sure. David yes. yeah. Francie, woo! Uh -huh. Indeed. Indeed. So we love singing that song. He wrote that song a cappella, and that was a really fun one for us to to take and, and morph into our own, and, and but we just love his songs. So. We're going to take you some, to another place now, and we're going to slow things down and play a great Scottish air. This is a tune that I found in a collection of Scottish tunes. Uh, it's called the, the Playford Collection, usually. Uh, the title of the tune is kind of just this big advertisement for the collection, um, but uh, it's the big words that are in bold are Highland Humors. <clears throat> um, but uh, is a collection that was published in 1700. It's known to be the, the oldest collection of Scottish music. Um, I mean, Scottish folk music, I should say. Um, and uh, was published by Henry Playford, who was the son of John Playford. Mm -hmm. And John Playford is well known for being uh, a writer, teacher, proponent, and music publisher for English country dance. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, even today, you can go to what are called Playford Balls, and um, he's still celebrated a lot in English country dance. Um, but he had this publishing company, and they would publish music specifically for English country dance. And um, at that time, uh, Scotland, there was a mix of things going on in Scotland from, from England, um, one of which was, you know, they were being persecuted terribly. And um, it kicked off their lands, and there was a lot of happening in the 1700s to Scotland, and mostly from England. Um, but in the midst of all of that, there was also kind of a European romance going on with Scotland. And there was kind of an infatuation. And um, some romance novels were written about Scotland, <laughs> most notably Rob Roy. And um, there was just this general thought that the the wild Highlanders were noble savages. And um, so there's a little bit of a romanticization that was a part of the colonization. It's kind of a weird mix there. Um, but English people started to kind of be attracted to these Highland tunes that were coming through. And Scottish music in general kind of came up in popularity in England at the time for English country dance. It was kind of being intermixed. And people liked these hornpipes and these uh, there are various types of tunes. None of them were specifically, in my opinion, like really like Scottish music. It was like music that they could tolerate from Scotland. Was <laughs> and this, this collection kind of reflects that. These are mostly lowland tunes. Uh, these are uh, a lot of waltzes, a lot of airs. Um, there are some danceable tunes. There are one of the original, this is the original publication of the song, Old Lang Syne is in this collection. Uh, but it's not the melody we sing at New Year's. It's an older <laughs> melody. It must actually, it might be a more beautiful melody. Um, but it's... Uh, Hot take. Huh? <laughs> Hot take. Hot take, yeah. Anyway, uh, so this collection of tunes is, is really beautiful. Uh, the notation looks like chant. I mean, it's, it's not even a modern notation, so it's very old. Um, and this tune comes from there. It's called Allen Water. And Allen Water is a little like area of Scotland. It's got a creek running through it. Allen water and um, it's just really beautiful for many years it was a spa in the 1800s um, apparently Charles Dickens would vacation there uh, once or something and then <laughs> and <laughs> Charles Dickens slept here yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know all of Scotland is you know basically a spa um, it's a great nature reserve it's a beautiful place and uh, so we like to think of this tune as a hymn to nature
came back after a 10 month break, which was uh, unintent, like it was forced, but um, we're, we're glad it's over. And uh, so we didn't work on any music for 10 months. And so we had these, this music that we've been working on. And, and for the last few nights, we've just decided it doesn't matter if we've arranged it or not, we're just going to play it. So, um, but now we arranged it today. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's not so good anymore. So, um, but it's two new tunes, two tunes of ours, uh, two words by, by these two gentlemen to my right and left. The first tune was written by Ryan, and it's called Pretty Good Friday, which okay. was written about Good Friday. <laughs> and the second tune is called Ladybug, which was written by Jeremiah McLean about ladybugs. <laughs> my tune's not actually about Good Friday. I just wrote it on Good Friday, and it was a pretty good Friday. <laughs> Thank you. 
for being guinea pigs. We appreciate it. <laughs> people, uh, people do ask us how we rehearse, uh, as, as it is that Eric and I are on the east side of the country and Ryan's out here on the west. And it, it, I mean, we don't, <laughs> except for today at Betsy's house. Thanks to Betsy. I could, I could tell you how they rehearse if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, she will not. <laughs> There's a lot more talking than playing. Um, so we're going to do a song called The Lowlands of Holland. And I, I want to say that I learned something as we've been performing this piece. I didn't know that The Lowlands of Holland might, in fact, yeah, yeah. not refer to the Netherlands. Um, I mean Holland, the Netherlands, right? Yeah. So this is this is a child ballad, and uh, many of the so the sort of the, the country that's that's sort of involved in the in all of these songs that you find in England, Ireland, and Scotland that people don't talk about as much as Australia. So there's a lot of travel back and forth. So Australia ha sort of holds a place. There's songs that come from there, and there's songs about there. So historically, uh, Australia a name for for Australia was New Holland. So the lowlands of Holland could very well most likely actually refer to Australia. Oh. So that sort of brings that into the fold for this song and this genre. Oh. Did you already play Ladybug? We did. We did. Oh. <laughs> that was a last one. <laughs> you blinked and you missed that. Did, it not, it, was did this... it not remind you of a Ladybug? <laughs> <laughs> well, there were, yeah. So that's the fun thing about arranging is that, you you know, we kind of try to disguise the fact that there are two <laughs> tunes in there. They were in the same key. Yes. So, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pretty good ladybug. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's right. Um, but yeah, let's do it. So we should also mention that in, in this song, The Lowlands of Holland, we, we marry it. So, so I mean, this is this is a typical traditional song. It ends with a lovely drowning. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so to sort of uh, alleviate that a little bit, we've added a tune. Uh, this is a tune written by someone, uh, a great contrabass fiddler, a friend of ours named Ben Schreiber, and the tune Yay. is called Yay. Yeah. Oh my God! Now you really don't get that. Most places we play. <laughs> wow. I like these people. Pascal Jean, Ben Schreiber. You guys. <laughs>
Set of tunes, and we're going to take a break after that. There will be an intermission, and then we'll come back. Um, we do have some CDs. We, we made one as Carlos, <coughs> so we'd love for you to come <coughs> take a look at this. Maybe you can take one home. This is a new CD here. Yay! The, uh, the, the centaur on the front is actually myself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was me! I was a little summer, a little summer back in those days, but yeah, that's me. It's, it's my blackness there. <laughs> I kid, I kid, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, we do have that CD. We also have a deal going that if you buy one of our CDs and you don't like it, you can mail it back to us and we'll send you a CD we don't like. <laughs> Pretty good deal in my opinion. Doing, doing, doing our part to rescue the US Postal Service is over and this is a very old joke, by the way. I think the first person who told that joke, someone told me that it Silly was... Silly wizard. Silly wizard, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <clears throat> Silly wizard told a lot of jokes. Yeah, and actually, um, that's true. I've got another joke coming up, actually, from Johnny Cunningham, so stay tuned for the second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to end the half with a bunch of, a bunch of tunes, jigging some reels. Thank you. 
few minutes. We need a break. So <laughs>
was talking to uh, Abby earlier, and she said um, they've been doing this for almost 15 years now. Wow. And uh, when she gets breaks that are long, she starts to feel like life is a little bit more vanilla. And um, <laughs> so she looks forward to doing it again. And I gotta say, it's exactly the same thing for us as musicians. We love the event of a performance or a, a concert. And not, not necessarily self-serving, it's like, I love it when people come together for a moment and can participate in that moment together. And I just think that's so cool. I love it when you talk while I'm tuning it. It's yeah. great. <laughs> and along those lines, I want you to know that the mandolin is actually, it's an Arab word. And it means out of tune all the time. <laughs> Keep talking, Ryan. Keep talking. And violin is also an air word, and it means perfect in every way. <laughs> now, I, I actually, I do have. This is a, this is not a joke. Um, <laughs> he often says that before. He do you tells like me that how they? they yeah, there are, um, uh, as you can see, there are register uh, stops on the on the accordion, kind of like stops on an organ. It, it, it gives you different sounds. They have names. Uh, one of them is a French word called musette, and it, it uh, actually I don't have that particular sound, but it's this sound of the accordion really out of tune. You, heard, you know, you can all imagine those really super out of tune accordions. And the word musette is the French word for a type of bagpipe. So that's not a joke. I mean that. Okay. That, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Abby, it's definitely not a joke. <laughs> Abby did ask me to. I'm sorry. You can keep talking. <laughs> this is a special kind of accordion, though. Tell us, tell them about your friend. Okay, so I was recently in Italy because it turns out I had two accordions that needed repair, and it's cheaper for me to fly with my entire family to Rome, rent a car, drive up across the country to the Adriatic to Castelfidardo, where the guy who built this lives. Uh, because shipping them of the insurance and all the import duties was impossible. So I had two accordions and this incredible family of accordion builders in a town that is the size of Mount Vernon, Washington. I, I'm not sure if I have a good analogy yeah. for Oregon. Yeah. Okay, you can, you can visualize about yeah. It's home to eight of the world's greatest accordion manufacturers. Yeah. This is an amazing place. So we, we spent our vacation there. Uh -huh. It's nice. very beautiful. Hood River is a good uh, analogy. Hood River, yeah. yes, the size of Hood River. Without a giant river. Right, with the ocean. And without any accordion makers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when you come into the city, you know, there's the center of, you know, where there's like a big roundabout, and usually towns will have like, I don't know, artichoke capital of the world or, or some other yeah. vegetable, <laughs> and there's an accordion in the middle of their roundabout. There really is an accordion. <laughs> and how long did it take to picture accordion? A week. Exactly how long we had. <laughs> So we're gonna do a couple of tunes. The first one is a tune that I wrote called April and Joe's for April Birch and Joe Newberry. Oh, cool. If you know them. And then the second tune is a tune that Ryan wrote called the Brownington Cayley Club, which you can ask us about after the concert because there's a story there as well. <laughs>
cell phones. <laughs> that actually is a reminder for Ryan to retune his, his fiddle. Did you notice that he had tuned his fiddle for that last night? Cross tune. Of course you noticed that. Well, I have to have an alarm set for that because I usually forget. So. <laughs> So I just want to warn you, joke coming up, <laughs> the preamble, actually we did this last night and I, uh, I took advantage of Ryan's great joke, which actually, he, to be fair, he did get from somebody else, Johnny Cunningham. Johnny Cunningham. Yeah, he, still it's a great joke, and you know what, a great joke, if you tell it, and people laugh, it's your joke, right? I mean, no. <laughs> it's like saying you played a great tune for people and therefore it's your tune. That's not true. I'll think on that. <laughs> well, I, I just gotta jump on the joke and I won't do that tonight. What's that? No, you should do it. Because that actually, right? Okay, I'll tell here's the setup, right? Let's we're not here. argue, you guys. We're in Hood River and it was a quiet crowd and Brian told this great joke and nobody laughed. And I felt, oh. Oh. And I felt Wait, really I'm bad. Actually, that's completely not true. They did laugh, actually. They totally laughed at the joke. Oh. <laughs> but then you just edited it. He was, he was trying then, to build sympathy for your joke. I, I, I told a joke after your joke. You did. And that didn't get a laugh. And then we talked about the fact that I, you said, you know, and then, hey, and then they laughed. You guys, why don't we tell the joke? Okay, ready? No, no, no. We're not going to tell the joke. We're not going to tell the joke. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, they don't need a joke. This is better. Okay. Can I have an A? Okay. <laughs> after all that. <laughs> Have you guys watched the Smothers Brothers? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like that. Yeah, it's a little like that. I know. Wait, which one am I? <laughs> Seriously, if you don't tell the joke, I'll get a tell the joke. He's gonna tell the joke. You have to do that. It's a song. Okay. <laughs> you can't just tell the joke. This is the worst we've ever done this intro. <laughs> So uh, we're going to sing you a song from Chris Drever, who's a wonderful guitarist and singer from Scotland. Uh, you may know of him from playing in a band called Lau, uh, and he's a wonderful songwriter as well. This is a song he wrote called Mark the Hard Earth, uh, which is the title track off of his first solo album. Uh, and it's, it's, we, we've been talking a lot about what makes a, a song great lyrically, and, and one type of great song that we like is a song that paints very clear pictures, but you can't quite tell what it's about when it's over. It's kind of up to you. So this is one of those, but to me, this song is about the weather. And it's basically about the fact that Chris lives in a place where the weather isn't very nice. In Scotland, it rains a lot and snows a lot. Some, well, not snow very much, but there's snow in the song. Uh, and, uh, and he never left. So it's sort of a, a melancholy coming to terms with that. So. I can kind of relate to being from a place that gets a lot of rain, because, you know, I come from the Northwest. And um, I've learned to love the rain, though. Um, I like will walk all winter long in the rain, and um, but when I'm away, I'm on, on the road. I get a little homesick, so sometimes I'll go find a Starbucks and <laughs> then I'll go back to my room and go into the bathroom and turn on the shower and just get in and drink my coffee and feel <laughs> a little like I'm at home. <laughs> And winter brings their tears. 
choices and I'll shoulder the blame. For me, I like rain on a gray afternoon. The sounds on my window, they lighten the blue. Is there a still as when rain's coming down? The silence and darkness, they steal old souls. Well, between us, uh, well, the last time we played here, there would have been less than this, actually. <laughs> One fewer. One fewer. <laughs> but between us, there are six children. Uh, Ryan has four of them. And uh, Jeremiah and I have one each. And we, we've been touring a lot, and we miss them when we're on the road. So uh, we've decided to, to sort of put a piece together in their honor to help us think of them. And so we're going to play three tunes for our kids right now. The first one is one that Jeremiah wrote for my daughter, Nia, who's three. Uh, and the second one I wrote for uh, actually Jeremiah's whole family, but in particular his son Luke. It's called Luke's New House. Uh, and then the last one is one that Ryan wrote for his son Roy, and it's called Roy Michaels. Sometimes people ask me, what's it like to have that fourth kid? And I tell them, well, it's kind of like you're drowning, and then someone throws you a baby. <laughs> That's a Jim Gaffigan joke, by the way. <laughs>
can probably guess Brian's son's age, just, just by the nature of that last two. I did write it when he was zero. <laughs> you had a premonition. Well, I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> He's 11. We're going to sing a song now from Johnny Moynihan, who uh, was an incredible Irish musician, um, singing to Dannon and Sweeney's men. And um, we love when a traditional musician has a burst of creativity and writes their own song. And there are many, many traditional singers who did so. In fact, I would say most of the most well-known traditional singers also wrote their own songs. And sort of once you get into songs, you're into songs. But often they would, they, they're lesser known. And so we love when a song makes its way onto a YouTube video or a live album or something like that. And we like to kind of snatch those up and create our versions of those to the word we've We've dubbed the word colossify. Just the other night, actually. <laughs> yes. Colossify. Uh, it has so, the unfortunate, uh, unfortunately, it, it somewhat has the uh, connotation of ossify, which has to do with. Uh, <laughs> we're not doing that to folk music, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, this is our version of Johnny's song, Standing on the Shore.
those kids that I have um, when I'm gone and out of town, the person that's totally responsible for them, and frankly, when I am in town as well, um, <laughs> is my wife of 21 years. Uh, she's a hero of mine. Um, and I, I wrote all of my kids a tune, but it took me many years to write her a tune. Um, but I finally did. So we're going to play it for you. It's called Brook Lee. Uh, and this is actually on uh, a CD that, that precedes the, uh, the Headland CD. It does. It's on a CD called Harbor that Eric and Ryan, it's kind of how we started, yes. Eric and Ryan were doing a CD and they, they, they asked me to come play a tune with them. Actually, it was this tune. It was. So we, we met, we started arranging, we had a great time. I remember we recorded that tune and maybe we recorded some others and then, oh my god, it was just like off to the races. It was this tune. We were like, maybe this should happen more often. <laughs> and so that was called.
Slip reel. That's a good a reel. That's a good definition for it. Yeah. Is that a, is that a thing? Is a slip reel a thing? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a three two. Three, two. <laughs> three two. Yeah. I've heard I've heard the term. Uh, I think triple reel or something like that. Tri triple reel. Yeah. yeah. Actually, a guy in um, somewhere else decided that it was actually a two, which was pretty amazing to hear. Actually, oh, wow. I did write it in three, but. It was cool to hear it in two, actually. It's not a shot she proved talk. it, too, by counting yeah. like <laughs> We love questions like that. <laughs> Informed questions. Oh, we love it. It was really cool going to Betsy's house earlier. We're, by the way, we're staying at Betsy Branch's house, and thank you so much. <laughs> She's got a whole wall of music theory, and we were just kind of, like, geeking out on it today. Although, I did mention... I don't feel like it's geeking out at all. I feel like the rest of the world are geeks for not knowing this stuff. <laughs> Honestly, it's the coolest stuff ever. Anyway, thank you, Betsy. We're gonna play you another air. Uh, this one comes from Tony Cuff. Incredible, he's the legend. Didn't hear, didn't hear a big whoop for Tony Cuff. <laughs> That's because people are, are in reverent silence. <laughs> oh. No, that's true. <laughs> Tony Cuff was a, a guitarist and singer in a band called Ossian, which was a very influential Scottish band. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very influenced by his music. So uh, we're going to play you some of his, one of his instrumental tunes, actually. I learned this tune from a fiddler named Sarah Hoy, who is from Glasgow. And she was here for a camp. We had a session together. I sang a Tony song. And uh, she used to babysit for Tony's kids. So she was like, have you ever heard this one? And proceeded to play this tune that melted me. And uh, so we're going to play it for you now. It's called Wendell's Wedding. Mm
It's always a good thing to tune before the last number. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go out on a sour note. Uh, we're so glad that you came. Um, well, thank you to Abby and all the folks out there online. Thank you all. Seattle on Friday, and uh, in between with we have with Counter Current, right? A lot of with Counter Current, yeah. Counter Current is playing. We're playing the Ballard Homestead with them on Friday night. Tell your, Tell Tell your friends. friends. Tell Bessie's your... our new manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, you could just drive to Seattle and join us then. It'll be a completely different show. Um, so yeah, come on up. Totally different jokes. <laughs> <laughs> They come for the jokes, they stay for the tunes. That's right. We did get our Johnny joke. Oh, yes, you did. That was oh, in the shower. That no, was in the shower. <laughs> so we're going to send you on your way with a, a set of tunes that we, that are some, some, some tune, one tune of ours, one tune of Jeremiah's, called Fanny Venny, and then uh, a Polska, uh, some modern Polska written by a uh, Danish accordionist, Rune Barslund, and it's called the Kerry Polska. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
That's right. He's, he's, he's a vet. He's a vet. All right. Well, we're gonna. Uh, what's the? What are we gonna do? We're gonna get silly now. Yeah, we're gonna get drunk. Yeah. Or not get drunk, actually. Well. It's a tune called uh, Johnny Johnny. Don't right. get drunk. Uh, Followed by a tune that actually Jeremiah wrote some years ago in a band called Nightingale. Ah. It's called Mariposa. Oh yeah. And then we'll follow it up with an old-time tune, good for contra, called. Or in the meeting house. Ooh. Or in this case, the Phrygian meeting house. For you, let's see. Oh, God. Okay.